View email, let's go Dutch. View email, let's go Dutch. Graag gedaan. Dear Let's Go Dutch, my husband and I are taking a group of friends with us to Amsterdam for eight days. Hoot! We plan to spend a few days seeing Amsterdam, but then take a different side trip each day. What are your suggestions for easy day trips from Amsterdam? Well, today on Let's Go Dutch, it's all about day trips from Amsterdam. I'm gonna travel the world I'm gonna go where the touch have been And I'm gonna share it with you, my friends Let's go Dutch, let's go Dutch, let's go Dutch From our base in Amsterdam, we'll venture out to the historic city of Haarlem The royal city of Delft Go medieval in The Hague and enjoy the quaint cheese towns of Gouda, Adam, and Akmar. So put on your clogs and let's go Dutch! Trains fan out from Amsterdam Centraal Station in all directions, with many great day trips only 30 minutes or less. Just a little bit longer offers even more options. Harlem. I like saying that. Harlem. Did you know if you're downtown in Manhattan, you could be in Harlem in 20 minutes? Well, it just so happens 20 minutes by train from Amsterdam also gets you to Harlem. And speaking of trains, you'll be greeted by Harlem's 1908 Art Nouveau train station. Just a short distance away is the Markt, the center of town. With the 1604 facade, the Stadthouse was built on the 1351 castle ruins of Count Willem II. One side of the Markt is lined with pretty but unassuming houses. The little stone building in the corner is the former civic guard's house, the Hofwacht. There is now a little museum inside. On the other side of the market sits the stately Fleishal, the old meat market. Here's an interesting note about the Fleishal. On Manhattan's Upper West Side is a church modeled after the Harlem Fleishal. Dominating the market is the Grote Kerk. That means big church. Big it is, and certainly worth a stroll through this historical 16th century church. Flanked by lions, the Harlem Staatswappen sits atop the ornate organ pipes. One day in 1766, the sounds coming off those pipes were courtesy of a 10-year-old Mozart. Amongst the gravestones found throughout the church is that of painter Franz Hals, who died in 1666. Just a short stroll from the Markt is the Franz Halls Museum. Originally from Antwerp, Franz became one of the best portrait painters of the Golden Age, including huge portraits of the Harlem Civic Guards. This delightful museum, housed in an old almshouse from 1609, is one not to be missed. With this traditional Dutch white wooden bridge, the picturesque Sparn River is where you'll find the Taylor's Museum and the Wach. The man who led the Dutch revolt against Spanish rule was Willem the Silent. 
His tomb is in the city in which he was assassinated, the royal city of Delft, our next destination. The home of Johannes Vermeer. Delft is very pretty, with the stone bridges lined with white railings. Vermeer lived on the Markt, the heart of Delft. This plaque tells us this is where Vermeer lived. For inspiration, he stepped out into the Markt, dominated on one side by the Nieuwerkerk and on the other, the Stadthaus. The Stadthaus was built in 1618 in a Renaissance style. The white spire of the Nieuwerkerk is a major landmark of Delft. The current spire dates from 1872, but the church is much older than that. They started building in 1393 and didn't finish until 1510. During the Eighty Years' War for Independence, Delft served as the arsenal. The revolt was led by Willem van Aranje, known to history as William the Silent. Nearby is the Prinzenhof, which is a convent that served as Willem's headquarters. Willem was assassinated in the Prinzenhof in 1584, and the bullet holes in the wall can still be seen. William the Silent was buried in the Nieuwerkerk. His mausoleum took eight years to build and was finished in 1622. Just like Amsterdam, Delft has a Nieuwerkerk and an Oudekerk. The church itself is from the 13th century and the tower is 14th century. Vermeer is buried in the Oudekerk. Also buried there is Dutch naval hero Piet Hein. He captured the Spanish fleet as it was loaded up with silver from the Americas and heading back to Spain. Delft was a VOC town and they had a warehouse along the Autochacht. The eastern gate into town was built around 1400 and known simply as the Ostport. The bridge is the Oostport Bruch. Vermeer painted it in 1660 as part of his View of Delft painting. Delft sure is pretty, isn't it? Vermeer painted his View of Delft in 1661. Want to see it? For that we have to go to The Hague. In the Nacht in The Hague. That's a strange name for a city. The Hague? Most people know of The Hague as a home to the International Court of Justice. Den Haag is the short name of The Hague. The long version is Sir Haven Hache. It means the Count's Hedge, and this village was the hunting lodge of the Counts of Holland. The prime attraction of Den Haag is the government complex known as the Binnenhof. This was the Count's hunting lodge, which was remodeled into a castle in the 13th century. The castle is known as the Riddersaal, the Knight's Hall. By the Moritzport entrance to the Binnenhof sits the Moritz House, built for Johann Moritz. Prince of Nassau and Governor of Dutch Brazil. His uncle was none other than William the Silent. In 1822, the Moritzhaus became the Royal Cabinet of Paintings, and it's there where we find Vermeer's view of Delft. Like Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum, the Moritzhaus is filled with the Dutch masters of the Golden Age. Den Haag has two distinct characteristics. Around the outer Stadthaus and Grotekerk is the working class neighborhood. 
On the other side of the Binnenhof is the Baroque side. Here's where the nobles lived, and today is where you'll find many embassies. It's also where we'll find another wonderful museum. Escher, he was a master of surrealism and illusion. Did you know he was Dutch? He was, and this former palace of Queen Emma now houses the Escher Museum. Moritz Cornelis Escher was born in Leowarden in 1898. The Order of Oranje Nassau knighted him in 1955. His works are fascinating illusions of architecture, geometry, mathematics, and perspective. Here's a famous Escher you've probably seen in books. The Escher Museum is a fascinating, interactive experience set in a classical building with a history all its own. A simple 30-minute train ride will take us to a city with huge ties to America, Leiden. Nothing much happened in Leiden in 1606, except, of course, for the birth of Rembrandt. Yes, the guy who painted the Night Watch. Yeah, that Night Watch was born in the South Holland city of Leiden. In fact, Rembrandt's last name, Van Rijn, comes from the Rhine River flowing through Leiden. In 1620, English Puritans who had been living in Leiden for 10 years took off for America aboard a ship called the Mayflower. That's right, the Pilgrims of Thanksgiving fame lived in Leiden, and before that, they spent a year in Amsterdam. Situated between the Old and New Rhine is the Bergt. Dating back to the Middle Ages, this fortification is built on a man-made hill called Amata. It was here where Leiden began. There are great views from on top, including the Hochlanzekerk, the Highlands Church. Leiden's 15th century St. Peter's Kerk holds the graves of Dutch master painter Jan Steen and also John Robison, the pastor of the English Pilgrim Congregation. Leiden also boasts a university founded in 1575 by Willem van Aranje as a reward for withstanding a Spanish siege. The botanical garden at the university is one of the oldest, dating from 1587. In 1593, the professor of botany was the man who introduced the tulip to Holland, Carolus Clusius. The short train ride category is Akmar, just 37 minutes away. One thing Holland isn't short of, and that's historic Praktik towns, and Akmar is one of them. From Akmar to victory. The town motto goes back to 1573, when Akmar was under siege by the Spanish. The house met the Kochel shows off a cannonball, a little souvenir that came flying through the window. Just down the canal is Akmar's Vachplein, dominated by the Vach, a former chapel from 1390 converted to the Way House in 1576. Akmar is an old city, 
getting its town charter in 1254 from Count Willem II. Close to the Krotekerk is the Stedelijk Museum. They have a fine collection presenting the relief of Akmar and the golden age of Akmar. That's Leeuwenburg, which means Lion's Castle. Back in 1707, when Jakob Leeuwenburg was redesigning his facade, he grew quite annoyed at the amount of time it was taking to get his building permits. He showed his appreciation by facing the lions and the facade backwards, so their little tushkas are facing the city coat of arms. Around the corner from Leeuwenburg is the Fish Market, the Fish Market. Akmar's canals are lined with pretty houses, crossed by typical Dutch drawbridges. Say cheese! Cheese! Oh yes it bees! You know this wax-covered cheese? Yep, it's Adam. Adam is just 14 miles northeast of Amsterdam and an easy day trip. There are no trains from Amsterdam to Adam, but there are several buses leaving from Central Station. Friday is the day to come if you want to see the traditional cheese market. It's held in front of the Wach, which is the Way House. The cheese market has been held here in front of the Wach since 1526. Nowadays it's held on Wednesdays during the summer. In the Golden Age, boats would dock there and unload the cheese. Porters would then bring them to the Wach to be weighed. Around the year 1230, a dam was built on the River A, hence the name Adam. The city charter was granted in 1357. Adam is just a delightful little town. The first canal you will encounter is the Schepenmarkers Dyke, meaning shipbuilder's dyke. This quiet canal has a pair of tea houses and a skinny footbridge, the Kavakobruch. Adam has a very unique dom plane. It's arched in the shape of a bridge. The Stadthaus is on the dom plane as well as the Adam Museum, housed in the oldest brick house in Adam, known for its floating cellar. What's that other cheese the Dutch are famous for? Hmm right on the tip of my tongue. Perhaps a 55-minute train ride and a bite of kas will jog my memory. And today, we're in the town with the Gouda name, Gouda! Cut. I got the Gouda part, but the city name is Gouda. Gouda. So we need something that rhymes with Gouda. Oh, Gouda. Take three. We're in the city, not known for its chowder, Gouda! Now in English, we say Gouda, and that's all Gouda, but it'd be more exotic when you tell people back home that you went to the ancient city of Gouda. They'll say, Oh, wow! What the heck is Gouda? Gouda is situated along the Hauer River in the eastern part of the Zout Holland province. The town name and that of the river comes from the Van de Gouda family, whose castle was in the area, now occupied by the Janskerk. The town charter was granted by Count Floris V in 1272. Dominating the Macht in Hauda is the whimsical Stadthaus, built in 1450. 
every half hour, the carillon rings, and there's a little procession of figures. They depict Count Floris V granting the town charter in 1272. Behind the Stadthaus is the Wach, the Way House. In the Middle Ages, before goods went to be sold, they had to pass through the Wach, where a tax was then levied. On Thursdays during the summer, the Kassmark fills the Wachplein. While other Dutch cities have famous painters to call their own, Gouda was famous for its stained glass artisans, who supplied stained glass to many churches in the Low Countries. And speaking of stained glass windows, this church is famous for them. It's the St. Janskerk, built in 1485, then after a fire in 1552, rebuilt. The church, originally Catholic, became Protestant after the Reformation. Now while Calvinist Protestants were going around smashing the trappings of the Catholic churches, they didn't have the heart to destroy these stained glass windows. This is called the Lazarus Gate. It's made of sandstone and goes back to 1609. It leads into the Katerina Hasthaus, which is a 14th century hospital. One of the farthest cities you could travel to is Maastricht. Strictly speaking, it's just under two and a half hours. The train station is a small hike to the old town, but there are bike rentals right at the station. Having a bike will be the best way to get around once you're there. The Maas River cuts through Maastricht. To get to the old town, we'll have to cross the river. Views of the old town from across the river are proctic at all hours. Poking out are the Anzaliva Frau Kerk and the twin spires on the Freithof. Maastricht's oldest bridge is the Servasbruch, and bridge over the Maas is what the name Maastricht means. Crossing the Servasbruch brings us into the old town and the heart of Maastricht, the Freithof. Sitting side by side on the Freithof are the Protestant St. Janskerk and the Catholic St. Servas Basilique. Historical buildings surround the square. Next to St. Servas is the Hofwacht, the head watch. On one side is the theater on the Freithof, which in the 14th century was owned by the Dukes of Brabant. Across the square is the Museum on het Freithof. In the 1500s, Charles V Duke of Brabant and later King of Spain stayed here and so it became known as the Spanish Government House. Just a few blocks away is the Markt, dominated by the neoclassical Stadthaus. A short ride away and the scenery starts to change. Heading first into the Stockstraat Vatier brings us to what looks like a Romanesque fortress. It's the Anzaliva Frau Kerk, dating back to the 11th century. A little further brings us into the charming Jäker Kvartier, named for the Jäker River snaking around the Beert. In this section, we find the 1229 Hellport, the Paterwinktoren, built in 1380. The House Opten Jäger, built right over the river. There is also a portion of the third defensive wall, dating from 1516.
Amsterdam makes a great base for exploring the Netherlands. The trains are always on time and making connections is very easy. Most hotels will have information about day trips or you can stop in at the tourist office. It's located just outside Central Station. Well, that's all the time we have. I'm Veronica Lewis. Join us again next time on Let's Go Dutch as we explore more of Holland and beyond. Tot ziens! <laughs>